Paul is saying, live as a citizen of heaven. Live as someone whose life has been shaped and transformed by the love of Jesus, by the kindness of God, by the closeness of the Holy Spirit in each of our lives. Be changed and transformed and live differently in the place that you are. Live as a citizen of heaven in Clubmore. Live as a citizen of heaven when you're with your family and your colleagues at work. When you see your friends down the park, when you go for a walk with them, live as a citizen of heaven everywhere that you go in the here and now. Paul isn't saying it thinking that this is a statement for them to live one day, but he's saying this is for you and me here and now. You and me need to somehow live as citizens of heaven. And the way that we do that is, as we said a couple of weeks ago, we move closer towards Jesus. Uh, We move closer and closer, bit by bit, step by step. We become open to learning new things, to being challenged and corrected to the growth that Jesus has for each of us. We want to grow towards him, to become more like him. So how are we going to do that? How are we going to share that journey together as a church family and a community in uncertain times? Well, it's fairly straightforward because some things remain the same, don't they? Even in the middle of uncertainty, even in the middle of anxiety, some things remain the same. And Jesus, our closeness, our relationship with Jesus being our absolute focus and our absolute priority is one of those things. Uh, We want to choose to draw closer and closer and closer to him. I was talking with someone uh, a couple of weeks ago about how discipleship might look at St. Andrews. And they said, it feels to me like we need to learn to carry each other through the next few months. That feels true, doesn't it? We need to learn to carry each other. And so this year, as we draw closer to Jesus, we also want to learn how to carry each other, how to support each other and hold each other and have patience and kindness and grace because it feels like we're staring down the barrel of a long, dark winter, doesn't it? But in the middle of a long, dark winter shines a light that the darkness hasn't overcome, the light of closeness with Jesus of a supportive church community and family that can carry us through the next few months. It's not the first time in human history that the world has been uncertain, is it? Uh, The church uh, throughout the centuries has lived through times of change and transition. It's uh, survived through world wars and uh, pandemics. It's survived through civil unrest and recessions, through uh, any kind of turmoil that you and me can imagine pretty much. The church has survived and stood the test of time. And one of the reasons that it's done that is because the church has gathered around ancient practices and habits that have sustained them and kept them going and kept them close to Jesus and carrying each other through that uncertainty. So our plan for discipleship this year is that we're going to gather around some ancient practices aimed at drawing you and me closer to Jesus, knowing that as we step closer and closer towards Jesus, we draw closer to the one who is the source of all hope and kindness. And that as we come closer and closer to the source of hope, our lives and our perspective on the world is changed. So starting in October, we're going to spend 10 months looking at a different spiritual habit, spiritual discipline. We're going to be inspired by um, a book written by someone called Richard Foster, which is a celebration of discipline. Um, And each month we're going to take a different practice from that book. And uh, we're going to spend a Sunday teaching on it. And then we're going to give you a resource uh, to help you practice that for the next of the month. Uh, We're going to be doing things uh, like meditation, like learning how to celebrate. We're looking at the practice of service, lots of different um, habits. And we're going to take a different one each month. 
Uh, And as we teach on it, as we resource you, uh, we recognize too that we don't do discipleship on our own, do we? We do it in the context of friendship and family. And so what we're going to do is we're going to invite you to be in a huddle as we have done previously. But those huddles won't happen on Sundays. They'll happen at a time that you arrange and you decide because we can't have people um, gathering in church buildings for that kind of meeting at the moment. Uh, And there's a slight change to the way that huddles are going to run because uh, if you want, you don't have to, um, you can choose who you want to be in a huddle with. You can uh, decide that a huddle is a group of between three and five people and you can decide that you want to be in a huddle with a specific group of people and you can ask them and if they say yes, then you get to be um, a huddle together. You might not uh, mind who you're with, that might not be a priority for you. You might just think, I just want to be in a group of people and I'm happy to get to know um, some new faces too. Uh, In which case, you can let me do all the organising and I'll sort that out for you and you can sign up uh, for a huddle either by um, chatting to Tim after one of the services. Uh, You can do it by calling the office or you can sign up uh, online uh, using the link that Mark's um, put below here. Those uh, huddles are going to be places that are supportive and caring. You don't have to be in one to do the practice, obviously, but but you're going to get so much more from it if you choose to be in one. Uh, Over the next 10 months, the thing that we need to do is we need to draw closer and closer to Jesus. We need to immerse ourselves in scripture. We need to learn how to support and carry and care for each other. Uh, And these practices, these 10 different practices are going to provide us with a vehicle and a framework for you and me to do that. The hope isn't at the end of the year that each of us has 10 new things that we now have to cram into our busy lives, but that we might have learned a couple of things that we get to take forward that get to shape our relationship with Jesus in the years to come, that are going to sustain us and keep us going. We want to draw closer and closer to Jesus, the source of all hope and all life. 